Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Fun Facts. So today we are going to do Legally Blonde. I wish I, what better than wearing pink, a chair pink, and a purple wall for Legally Blonde. Although it's not really neon pink or anything special, but let's get, but whatever. It's the best pink I got. It's, um, it's a very light pink. Maybe I'll, get, maybe I'll do another Legally Blonde look for the second one. And put Legally Blonde, um, like, neon pink on, just, just for the show. Okay, anyways, let's get into some fun facts here. Okay, some fun facts for Legally Blonde using Cracked.com, Business Insider, and, um that those just those two okay so if you hear my dogs that's they're going crazy 19 things we didn't know about legally blonde legally blonde came out in 2001 but even diehard fans may not know these secrets the film is based on a true story and reese witherspoon almost didn't get the role of l woods um matthew davies said he had crushes on witherspoon and selma blair the film was based on a book that's inspired by a true story. Before Legally Blonde, the movie came Legally Blonde, the book. It was written by Amanda Brown and was inspired by a real-life experience at, at Stanford Law School. Brown told the SF Gate in 2003, I wrote it all on pink paper with my pink furry pen. I finally found an agent who picked it up out of a slush pile because it was on a pink paper and because it was on pink paper. The scene where Delta New votes to use name brand toilet paper was based on a real sorority house during Elle's El Harvard Law School admission video. L sorority Delta New votes on opposing the change from Charmin, uh, Charmin toilet paper to a generic brand. That scene was based on co-writer Karen McCullough's experience in a sorority at James Madison University. McCullough reported told the university's Mont Pillier magazine we were denied our toilet paper I offered my sorority sisters activity points for stealing replacement rolls from the administration building the role of Elle Woods almost went to Christina Applegate who's probably still would have made a good Elle Woods but I can't see anyone else playing it other than Reese Witherspoon it feels nearly impossible to ma to imagine anyone with, but with but Witherspoon playing Elle Woods, but Christina Applegate had a chance at the role. However, she told Entertainment Tonight in 2015 that she turned down the part because, it, because she wasn't sure she wanted to play another stereotypical blonde character like her role in Fox's Married with Children. What a stupid stupid move that was, right? She said Reese deserved that. She did a much better job than I ever could, and that's that. And so that's her life. That's her path. Salma Blair almost didn't score the role of Vivian. It was originally offered to Chloe, Chloe Savini, Savini. The role of Vivian was originally uh, offered to actress <coughs> Chloe Savini, but Savini, sorry if I'm pronouncing the last name wrong, told the Daily Beast in 2014 she turned down the part to do the thriller Demon, Demon Lover 2002, which was shooting at the same time. Witherspoon met with real sorority members to prepare for her role. Witherspoon put a lot of work into embodying Elle Wood. She told Entertainment Weekly in 2001 that she spent time with real sorority members to get ready for the part. I went to dinner with them. It's sort of like an anthropological study. You learn what they eat, how they behave, and how they take care of their young. That sort of thing, she said. I hope it's all good and not bad. Because, you know, the stereotypical movies of sorority is that true? Like, do they make you do things to get into a sorority that's kind of inappropriate? Like, what what do you have to do to get in? I don't know if I truly know. Like, I, I like where we're from, sororities aren't big in in um, where we're from. So I'm just just curious if you guys uh, are a part of a sorority. Please let me know. Matthew Davis once said he had a big crush on Witherspoon in a 2001 interview with Mauve Line. Matt Davis, who played Warner, she had he said he had a big crush on Witherspoon since he was 15 years old. He told the publication that he acted like a bumbling idiot around her on set so much that the legally blonde producers pulled him aside to ask if he was okay. He eventually told Witherspoon, who was married to Ryan Phillip at the time, about his uh, who, oh, who was married to Ryan Phillip, 
Felipe at the time of his crush. She was like, oh, she was like, that's okay. That's so sweet. Okay, let's work on the scene, he said. David Davis said has also said that he had a crush on Blair. The actor may have gotten into Legally Blonde with a crush on Witherspoon, but it seems that he developed one for another leading actress. I absolutely loved and, ad and adored Selma, he told News.com in 2017. I developed a crush on her at the time, but she was with someone else. I think she was dating the guy from Rushmore, actor Jason Schwartzman, but he was coming around and I was kind of like, who is this guy? Huh, interesting. Keep having crushes, but no luck. <laughs> Witherspoon filmed the movie shortly after having her first child, so she had quite a few sleepless nights. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought for some reason she had kids after. The actress had her first child before taking on the role of Ellie L. In an interview with Cinema, Witherspoon said that her daughter Ava kept her up most nights during filming. I was worried that I wasn't getting enough sleep because my daughter Ava was sick quite often during the shoot and there were a lot of days where I didn't think I could pull it off. She said some nights Ava would wake up screaming because she had the flu and I would spend most of the night trying to rock her back to sleep and then had to be on the set at 7 in the morning for makeup. Oh my god. So I guess the acting world doesn't give you maternity leave. The movie almost had a very different ending. Pet Marie Claire at the 2015 Vulture uh, Festival McCullough shared that the film originally ended at the courthouse right after Elle won the case with her and Luke Wilson's character, Emmett, sharing a grand kiss on the steps. It then cut to Elle with Vivian starting their own le blonde legal defense club at Harvard School. It was just kind of a weak ending, McCullough said. The kiss didn't feel right because it's not a rom-com. It wasn't about their relationship, so test audiences were saying, we want to see what happens. We want to see her succeed, so that's why we rewrote, the gradu rewrote for graduation. Witherspoon said she got to keep all 60 of Elle's outfits from the film. The actress told Hollywood that she kept all the outfits that uh, she wore in the film mainly to keep them from being sold on the internet. She said, it really bothers me. Imagine some sicko in Wisconsin smelling the seams. It creeps me out. It's all in the closet. One day my daughter can play with it. Honestly, I would think that's a lovely, uh, even mo monument thing to have or memorabilia to have for yourself. That was your character you played. And I think that, and I don't know if that's really what got you famous, the show or the movie, but and like growing up watching it as a kid for myself was the first that was the first movie I've ever seen Reese Witherspoon in um and I know that wasn't her first acting role I know she's been in Friends like for one episode or two episodes but um she did I'm pretty sure she did more than that before so I, I honestly don't know how big she got like if she was already big when she was um when she was filming Legally Blonde or if Le Legally Blonde actually pushed her to be big, like pushed that um, narrative of being a bigger star, if that makes sense. Uh, David said, or Davis said he based his character on one of the U.S. presidents, according to the Morning Call in an interview on the movie Special Edition DVD. Davis said that he was based Warner off the President George W. Bush. The decision to make Elle's signature color pink was very deliberate. In a 2012 interview with Elle, costume designer Sophie de Rakoff shared how they picked Elwood's signature color. Reese and I actually went to visit a sorority house in the early prep, and it was just obvious that pink should be signature color, she said. Witherspoon hung out in Beverly Hills to nail her character's personality. Um, Witherspoon, who is from South told Screen Slam the last she spent a lot of time in Beverly Hills to get used to Elle's California girl mannerism. She said she observed women eating and shopping in order to get a better idea of how to act in the movie. According to the writers, the bend and snap was a spur-of-the-moment drunken creation. The producers really wanted a scene for Jennifer Coolidge, who played Paulette. At first, it was going to be about a robbery or a crime, but then McCullough and co-writer Kristen Smith... Uh, created the behind and sn bend and snap and drunk bar moment. According to the Entertainment Weekly, McCullough asked one of Elle shows a movie shows a move so she can get the UPS guy, and Smith came up with the now famous move on the spot. I love that. <clears throat> okay, we got time for one more or two more facts, and then I'm gonna let you guys go. 
So Matthew Davis based his character off uh, on George W. Bush, the actor who played the preppy ex-boyfriend Warner Huntington III, read the former U.S. president's biography to get into the mind of the character. And then the last one, um, the studio thought Reese Witherspoon was basically her character in Election. While the director wanted Witherspoon for the role of Woods, the studios apparently thought she was too much of a shrew. Uh, my manager finally called and said, you got to go meet with the studio head because he will not approve you. He thinks you really are your character from Election and that you're repellent. And then he was told to dress, and then I was told to dress sexy. Um, that is to me, to me silly. Like, why are you, why are we sexualizing women? But it was back then. Um, not that that's any excuse and it makes it okay, but that just unfortunately was the way it was. Luke Wilson didn't need to audition to play L. Emmett. Of course, no guy needed to audition for any role that seemed who was more than women. Anyway, said screenwriter Kristen Smith, we spent a lot of time faxing the director of, um, oops, the director like Luke Wilson, Luke Wilson, and then finally after the table read where a different actor played Emmett, we were like, Luke Wilson, Luke Wilson. He was like, that's a really good idea. We were like, we've been telling you. And <clears throat> uh, that is it. Every time I see Luke Wilson, though, I think of him as like a like a safety net almost. I'm like, every time he's in a movie, I'm like, okay, you run to that guy. He's a good guy. And I don't know if that's like him in real life, but that's what I get. That's the vibes I get from just him showing up in those movies and his characters that he has always played. Uh, anyways, that is it for me. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll chat soon. Bye now.